Hey everyone, it's Stephanie from Scruff and Creek. We're back. We're working on page three. Page three of Let's Get Artsy. I'm going to pull page two back in just so we kind of remember what we were doing over here. As you can see, I'm continuing the flow with the yellows and this pattern and the blue. I'm making the blue the bolder statement here where the fuchsia was the boldest statement here. So let's get going. I'm really liking the way this is coming together. Oh, it's different. Um, I had mentioned earlier that uh, instead of applying my flaps to the edges, which is something I most often do, I'm actually insetting them a little bit. And I'm pretty, pretty happy with the way that looks because you get this frame effect, which I'm, I'm really liking. So let's get going. So this is going to be our base page and it's just a full, um, A full uh, print on directly on your pocket page. Your pocket page is eight by ten, eight by ten. <clears throat> and if you need the instructions for the base album, if you go to the playlist and uh, show all, the first one is the walkthrough. The second one builds the base album, and the subsequent videos are um, adding the designer paper and the interactive elements of the album. So basically the al base album build is all the black card stocks stuff on the base album. And then from then on, it's what we're doing right now. Each one of the subsequent videos will be numbered and there's two numbers. There's the number, which is the represents the page in the album as you're flipping through it. And the second one is the build and the build is the sequence in which I actually cut through the designer paper. And so far as this album goes up to this point, page three, the builds are the same as the page. So I'm cutting through the paper in the order of the pages thus far. But if I switch that up a little bit, and sometimes I do because I start to look at forward on paper planning and see that I need to change my distribution of paper. Um, so it may cause me to cut through my paper in a different sequence. So pay attention to both of those numbers. Every single um, page has a build as well. So just make sure they're the same or go back and look at these in the build order if you're worried about cutting through your paper and not having enough at the end. Okay, there we go, enough about that. Okay, so we have this nice large card and it is 10 by 7, 10 by 7. You're going to score at 5, so you're going to have a 5 by 7 card. Okay, that's going to get placed here. I have decided to use this beautiful print. So I'm going to go ahead and add my, I'm going to set my pocket page. I'm going to decorate this first because as I'm deciding where I'm going to place them on the base, um, I want them to be decorated. <clears throat> you can add it first if you like. Adding the elements last gives you the most flexibility. That didn't work. I think I was a little bit too high. There we go. Okay, so I know that's going to go here. I got to think a little bit about what's going on here. I know this goes here. And I'm going to have an extension on top. So I'm just kind of talking to myself. <laughs> Make sure it's not inked. So I'm going to ink it and lay it down. I am using chocolate malt. And I uh, need to trim that a little bit more. It's a powder puff. And these are available in our shop. If you guys don't have them. I really like them uh, for, the, for the purpose that I use. Um, I'm not a stamper. I just use it to knock the white core off the paper, as you can see. And, um, oh, I'm going to trim it so I shouldn't ink it yet. I have, like, dropped this face down onto my carpet, and it's not transferred because you really do have to push on it to get the ink to transfer. That's not the case with um, a lot of other inks. You drop it, and that's it. You've got... You've got a stain on your carpet. So that's one of the reasons I like it. I also, it doesn't, doesn't transfer to me as much as some of the other stamps. And it's an applicator and a stamp in one. So I'm not constantly looking for my applicator. Oops. I hope everybody's doing good. I just got back from a walk with my dog. It's a beautiful day. 
but I drank too much coffee, so I feel a little jittery. All right, that goes there. I had these layered, and I got to think about what. <laughs> I think this is going to go here, and this is actually where the photo is going to be on this one, like so. Is that what I was doing? I got to think about that. And then I have this. This goes on the inside. So this is going to go in here underneath this flap. So it's going to peek out. Oh, I know what I was doing. I kept going back and forth on whether or not I wanted blue or yellow here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to lay it out and then we're going to look at it together and we're going to pull in page two. And take a look and see what it definitely changes the look as you can see this is brighter so the other thing I was thinking about doing here is it just needs a little something so I was thinking about using this this is one of the um, die cuts and just adding her to the to the edge so I would just be fixing part of her and then you'd be able to tuck your photo slightly behind like that so that's kind of what I'm thinking Okay, so I'm going to start by putting this down. It's going to come in a half inch. I'm going to use my grid here and eyeball it. Now, as you recall, this is 10 inches across and uh, we're scoring at five. So this is five by seven. So we're going to center that seven inches up and down. And I am going to pull in page two because they're going to be side by side, and I kind of want this line to go across both. So I'm going to work on that. And I'm just going to use a straight edge across. The two pages. To help with that. Oops, I'm way too high. Okay, there we go. Now we can set that aside. And this is doesn't go here this goes here so this is the same size um it's seven and a half inches tall as well you can put use glue or tape uh, i'm gonna use glue here i meant to round these corners <clears throat> I forgot to tell you the measurement. This is three and seven eighths by seven. Three and seven eighths by seven. You're going to score at. Let me see which one's the easier number to give you. Score at three and three and one eighths. So you're going to have a little bit of a gusset. Three and three and one eighths. Now I'm going to turn this sideways. I'm still looking at my half inch mark, which is about right there. I don't know what I did. I keep dropping my rulers all over the place. I don't think that, yeah, it is straight. Mess. Okay, now we got to start thinking about these things. This this has to be yellow. Okay, 
I have to think about what I'm doing. This has to be yellow because it's going to be on the inside. So the question, I don't like, I think I want to do it this way. I might need to turn this down. I think I want this on top. Oh, no, I don't because this is what's on top. So I don't want these two patterns together. So this will go here. And then this is going to go here. There we go. I'm not crazy about the words here and the words here, but I like it better than these laying on top of each other. It's too much. So I'm going to go ahead and ink this. That's the wrong card. That's also the wrong card. One of these is trimmed right, I think. Nope. Here it is, finally. So it needs to be inked. And this is... Four by six. Four by six. And it's just a flat mat, four by six. Six and a half by four and a half. Six and a half by four and a half is just a photo mat. Or it's not even a photo mat, it's just a mat. It's a mat for a mat. Yeah, so you'll need one more four by six. Actually, that's not true. It's going to be a 12 by four, 12 by four. So I just did two, four, one, four and a half, one, six and a half by four and one, six by four and put them together. Um, but if you have 12 inch um, cardstock, just make it six by four, score it in half. Turn my yellow piece down just a little bit. <clears throat> okay, so for now, what I'm trying to do is decide. Um, Which side I want up, <clears throat> solid or patterned? And then the other option is the blue, but I don't think I want to do that. We're not going to look at the blue. So it's going to open this way. This flap is going to come out that way. I think that's a little bit much. I think I'll find something to decorate this with. Okay, so there's option A. And there's B. I kind of like the solid. What do you guys think? Pull in page two and decide. Of course, you can just do yours any way you want, right? I'm going to do that. So many choices. Okay. 
can go ahead and glue this down. I'm going to do it this way. go here so before I glue this down I want to decorate this so but I want to look at it <clears throat> fully opened as I choose my patterns to go across so <clears throat> are going to be used. I'm going through my <clears throat> scraps to see what I have. Not scraps, but paper that I've already cut through before I look at cutting into a new sheet. <clears throat> down by the summit. Okay. Okay, that looks good. I'm happy with that. And then I'm going to um I think I'm going to color block and mount this too, just because I really like that flow. Now we need to find something to go on the two outside edges. <clears throat> We've used all three of the colors, so what we haven't used is... Got bits and pieces, but not enough. Let me see if I've got another sheet of that. Oh, here's a big piece. I am just not crazy about this. It doesn't seem to work with these. These look so much more organic and that's sort of geometric. Okay. Um, Okay, change my mind. I'm going to put this, we're going to do purple and purple on the outside, and we'll do one really strong statement in the center. Okay, hopefully y'all are on board with that. Let me see, is this fine? we go. <clears throat> Let's see if I have, oh yeah, we have this pattern. Let's do that. It should have, if I, I can't remember how much do I have here. Oh, no, I need to cover that too. I think it's less than four inches. I'm hoping one sheet will cover both sides, but I'm going to check it out real quick. This is from the 8x8 collection. You can kind of tell the scale. This is from 12x12. 12 12. Okay. 
No, it's not going to be enough. Shoot. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and cut it from the 12 by 12. It definitely needs to be seven inches tall. And then we can go ahead and round the corners. Sorry, I'm talking to myself. It wasn't going into my tremor straight or the way I wanted it to. Okay, look at all these things inked. This in this is going to go right up against um, the spine right here. But before we do that, we're going to have to glue this one down because <clears throat> it comes just ever so slightly over that. So I got butterflies going every darn direction, so I don't know what to do. I think I like this. This one looks like it's, oh, actually, look at my flowers. It's this way. Okay. 
I'm going by that flower. It's subtle, but it, it does have a direction. Okay, now we're going to put this in. Coolio. Okay, now look at these. Okay, that's hanging over about a quarter inch. Now we need to put our magnets, which is why we haven't glued this side down yet. So, ooh, this is this looks a little off. Um, I'm going to put the magnet right about here because I want this to reach all the way over. And hold this edge down so I think that's going to be where it needs to be yep I'm happy with that so I'm going to start by taking this side down I'm going to push it down just a little bit so it's not exactly symmetrical. Give it a little bit more space up here. I just like the way it looks. Okay. <clears throat> now we'll put um, some paper on the back of this, decorate it. How much do I need? Looks like this will cover it. We're almost there, guys. I never did find my the tool that I like. My room is such a disaster. <laughs> I can't find anything. I think I accidentally threw it away in my trash, and I have to go through my trash, and I don't feel like it. <laughs> Okay, let's see. Let's get things right side up. Now we're ready to glue this down. 
And I'm going to turn it upside down. Just using my finger as a guide. That's where our glue line starts and stops. And boy, does this feel weird because I'm not right handed. <laughs> I'm sure, it looks weird too. Then we're just going to let the magnet find it again and then drop the other side. Make sure your flap, there's a flange on it, so just make sure it's standing straight up. Um, so your magnet doesn't have to fight it. Okay. I didn't realize I had so much extra glue. How did I get so far off? I did. Ooh. That'll dry clear, thank goodness, but I'm glad I opened it before it stuck. If you're using one of these, be careful because it will roll your paper off if you're too harsh. Okay, that'll dry fine. And this goes here. Okay, I'm going through all the papers that I have. Again, I don't want to cut into another 12 by 12 until I've reviewed um, <clears throat> the pieces that have already been cut <clears throat> so that I can preserve the larger pieces for the backgrounds. That is, maybe some of these will work. Fishy. These are the tallest ones. That's not quite tall enough. So they're all too short. Except this one. It's a shame because it's almost the right size. Not quite. All right. Um, let's see what else I have. Is this? No, that's a neat bag. I have to cut through. Oh, I do have. <coughs> that's pretty bold, huh? I don't know if I like that. These two together. Mm, maybe not. Okay. Well, I do have this and I do have this, so. That will work. Oh. And I also have that. I think I want to save this. Um, it's such a strong pattern. I might want to use it someplace else in the book.
that won't be enough. That's three, six. I'm thinking about splitting this, so I'm going to see if I like it for. Um, here's what I mean by splitting it um, to do it like a color block. Okay, that's what I'm going to do. Get rid of all the, these bits. Uh, <clears throat> Actually, I want this pattern. Well, I know the blue is going to go here, so let's get that tack down before I give myself another option. <laughs> Is that the split? Yes, it is. Okay, so this came from a four by six split in half, and then we're just cutting, trimming. Oh, I missed that line. Um, the yellow to fit. Trim the wrong line. Okay.
Okay. Now this looks a little simple, so I'm going to go into my my trays where I keep the goodies. Let's see if we can't find something to embellish this with. Kind of in love with this frame. All right. Too much pink. Hello. It's my son. Kind of disappears. Then I've got all these wonderful cut aparts too. Ooh, I like that. Okay, let's do that. Okay, I'm loving that. It's already inked and ready to go. You can mat it on black if you want, but I'm going to leave it as is. <clears throat> Ooh, even the back is pretty. If you want, you can just glue the one side so your photo can slip under it. Or you can lay your photo partially on it. Okay, I'm going to bring in page two. So we can look at these side by side. I'm pretty happy with the way they turned out. Yeah, I think there's plenty of flow between the two. And this just was cut out from some words on one of these. So that's an easy thing to do. Pick something that you want to, um, a saying, and then just double mat it and it'll, uh, it'll look beautiful like this. Okay, so that is the end. So there's page one, two, three. I'll be back very soon with page four.